Now the other type of HTTP request is the POST request. And this differs in, in basically two fundamental ways. When you're using a GET request, the parameters of that request are displayed as part of the what's called the query string. And you see that in the address bar on the web browser. When you use a POST request, it doesn't work like that. All you get to see on the address bar of the web browser is the servlet URL that you requested. All the data that goes with it is sent as a separate posting, a separate package of data. So that's the first difference. The other difference is when you're using a GET request, because all the data goes in one string that's sent off to the web server, there's a limit to how much data you can send. When you're using a POST request, because it's sent as separate packages of data, there is no limit to the amount of information that can be sent on the request. So those are the two major differences. Now with this example, to make our request a POST request, it's as simple as changing method equals GET to method equals POST. We have to put in the URL of the servlet. And again, I emphasize it's the URL of the servlet, not the servlet class name. And I'll talk on another occasion about how the container decodes that URL and works out which actual class is to be executed. Now with this example, we've got an extra input, which is your name. There's the text that tells the user what's to be input. And then here the input has a type equal to text, so it's going to be a text box. And the name of this text box is, perhaps I could have cho chosen a slightly better uh, label for this, but it's called name with a capital N. When this form is submitted, whatever the user has typed in the text box will be sent as a parameter on the request. The name of the parameter is name with a capital N and the value of the parameter will, will be whatever the user has typed. And that form will only be submitted when the user clicks on that submit button. The web server will determine what kind of request has come in it will then gather all the information, including all that parameter data, whatever the user typed, and will bundle it up into the request and response objects that are then sent as parameters. In this case, to the do post method, because it's a post request. What we're doing here on line 23 is getting hold of the value of the parameter called name with a capital N. In other words, whatever the user typed in that text box will be the value of the parameter and by calling from the request object the getParameter method specifying that we want it to be the name parameter with a capital N, that value typed by the user will then be returned as a string which we can store in our variable. So once line 23 is executed, whatever the user has typed is now stored in that variable name. Now the thing I have to point out here is the name that we put here has got to have exactly the same spelling with exactly the same mix of uppercase and lowercase letters as was defined back here in the HTML. So if I were to define the name of that text box as XYZ with a capital Z, then in the servlet when I get the parameter, I will have to put in here X, Y, Z with a capital Z. One of the early mistakes that students will make on this module is to forget to make sure that the spelling on line 23 here and here in the form, they forget to make sure that the spelling is exactly the same. So watch out for that little pitfall. We then are testing to see if the name is null because if nothing has been typed, you might get a null comeback. If that's the case, we'll set the variable name to an empty string, otherwise we'll make it equal to itself. That's just like saying, if name is equal to null, then make name equal to the empty string, double quote, double quote. Then we just process as normal. We're setting up the output back to the web browser, and then we're using println to send HTML tags. And with this one, we're customizing it, so we're making this a, a a custom response for our user and we're testing the value of name. If it equals the empty string then we're going to put on the string unknown person. Otherwise whatever the user typed which is now stored in the variable name is going to be catenated to what comes before. So we'll either have hello unknown person if the user typed nothing 
or we'll have hello followed by whatever the user typed. We've now seen that it's quite easy to get hold of the information that's typed on an HTML form by the user. And our servlets can get hold of that data very easily and then process it. In this example, all we're doing is just sending back whatever they typed. But of course, we could use that in all kinds of ways. We could store it in a database, for example, and then retrieve it at some other time. That's as much as I'm going to say today, and we'll look at more complicated things next time.